The Yellowstone Hydrothermal System has been supplied with electricity 24 hours a day, 365 days a year for at least the last approximately 2 million years through the release of heat from a subsurface magmatic system. The presence of this heat source causes convection of meteoric water, from rain and snowmelt, which circulates between the magma reservoir and the surface. Therefore, the activity and chemistry of hydrothermal systems are controlled by inputs from the surface, i.e., the amount of water and the temperature of shallow water rock interactions, and from depth, the amount of heat, volatile substances, or fluids supplied from crystallization processes. Magma. You might imagine that as these variables change over time, the hydrothermal system at the surface changes as well. But it is difficult to sort out what surface or deep inputs caused what changes at the surface, especially when those changes may have occurred hundreds to thousands of years ago. Geologists are addressing this challenge by investigating the enigma of old travertine deposits located within the Yellowstone caldera. Travertine, a hydrothermal deposit consisting mostly of the mineral calcium carbonate, calcium carbonate, is found around Firehole Lake in the Lower Geyser Basin and at Hillside Springs and near Morning Glory Springs in the Upper Geyser Basin within the Yellowstone Caldera. The deposits are old. No travertine is deposited today because most of the hot water in the upper and lower geyser basins is saturated with silica, CO2, not calcium carbonate. This means that the composition of the hot water in the past had to be different to form travertine. Currently, active travertine forms north of the caldera at Mammoth Hot Springs where calcium carbonate-saturated water has remained there for hundreds of thousands of years. However, no travertine-forming waters have been observed in the upper and lower geyser basins currently or during the past century. Intrigued, scientists first investigated the age of the travertine inside the caldera by measuring how much radioactive uranium, which was locked inside the travertine when it formed, had decayed into thorium. Serial decay of uranium is a useful method for determining the age of some geological deposits. Most of the travertine found in the caldera was formed over a short period of time in the last 15,000 years, during the late Pleistocene to late Holocene geological epochs, with different deposits throughout the basin forming synchronously. Geologists also noticed that the chemical properties of the deposits changed over time, from higher amounts of magnesium and lower oxygen isotope compositions in the past, to the opposite in more recent samples. The isotopic composition of stable isotopes, such as oxygen, is a powerful tool used to trace water sources. The low oxygen isotope composition is thought to be caused by periods of cold climate associated with major glaciations. The low oxygen isotope composition of the oldest travertine deposits suggests that they formed from glacial water sources. Second, scientists noticed that the timing of the travertine deposits coincided with a known period of cold and wet climate on the Yellowstone Plateau. High amounts of rainfall during times of wet climate likely resulted in more chemical weathering of surface sediments. Therefore, the recharge of the hydrothermal system at this time was more abundant, cooler, and carried more dissolved travertine forming elements such as calcium, magnesium, and bicarbonate.
The mixing of this cool recharge water with hot, upward flowing water changes the chemistry of the hot water for a short period of time at the location of greatest mixing. This results in travertine deposits on the surface, creating a record of this cool climate period. Previously, investigations into the Old Faithful and Steamboat geysers showed that their activity stopped during the prolonged dry season due to a lack of water supply to the hydrothermal system. A new study of the history of travertine deposition in the Yellowstone caldera finds that the opposite condition can also impact geysers and hot springs. Increased water supply to hydrothermal systems results in changes in water chemistry and mineral deposits. The only constant in the Yellowstone hydrothermal system is change. 